Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Consolidus Place for all you home studio buffs. And I'm telling you, that's where the industry is going. Um, we've got Mike Peacoat from Sweetwater, uh, along with Steve Dirkins and his SDR recording studio, where Sweetwater took a home studio. And man, it does not look like a home studio. Uh, stay tuned, look at that, watch and learn and, and, and improve your game at home. But in the interim, remember, it is the era of the aura. We're giving away 12 of these puppies. We're getting entries from all over the world, Belgium, Sweden, Africa, Argentina, Italy, Russia, Canada. Keep on going. We've got the first three winners of this week. And this little thing does a bunch, Omni, Cardioid, Podcasting. You can record vocals, and it, it 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 is good looking. It's sexy. From what I understand, it'll actually get you a mate if you don't have a mate. So it's pretty hot mic, um, and you can get one for free thanks to AKG. Uh, the first week winners are Nicolette Timmons from Derry, New Hampshire, Jones Nyarenda from Zambia, Africa, and Mark Osipek from Atlanta, Georgia. Now, I want to read your name next. But in order to do that, you have to enter. How do you do that? It's pretty simple. Click the link you see right below, pensamentsplace.tv forward slash giveaway. Enter your information. This is what we need. Name, email, mailing address, and phone number. It makes it easy to get the prize to you if you win. And you can have multiple entries. Click through all the links. Each action you complete earns you more entries. And that increases your chance of winning. So get your aura, because it's the era of the aura. Uh, more free stuff. How about Arturia's brand new Mellofy? Again, 10 days. They're giving this incredible plugin. It's brand new. No obligation. Put your information in and win. Got 10 days to do that from now until the 31st, till the end of December. So make sure that you go to our socials, get some information to us. We'll get back to you. Like and subscribe. You know all the drill. Um, we want to see you. We want to get, get make sure you get our newsletter. Keep up to date. There's lots of things going on. There's going to be a major amount of things going on in 2022. And as importantly, everybody from Pensado's Place wants to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday. You have no idea how much we appreciate you, how much 11 years later, 531 episodes, we wouldn't be here without you. And we've got more in store next year. We want to thank all of our incredible sponsors. And please take a moment to spend time with your family, your loved ones, relax, decompress. It is good for your soul. It is good for your creativity. It is important to take time and reflect and then kick some butt in 2022. So we love you. Just want to say happy holidays. And again, for all you home studio people, Sweetwater really gets it done. Mike Peacoat, his he's got so many titles, it's ridiculous. I think he might have just been named vice president of, of the country, not of Sweetwater. Uh, incredibly talented, along with Steve Durkins. Enjoy this interview. Happy holidays. And we'll talk to you in a little bit. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Thanks for having hey. us again. Sure, man. Mike's a pretty nice guy, too. <laughs> and he's a nice guy. I mean, yeah. and, and he really could be not a nice guy with all that stuff. Um, Steve, tell us about you, man. How did I, I know L.A. was a base and then you escaped yeah. and give Give yeah. us the background. So so born, born and raised Cali, Cali kid uh, did my time as a young lad converting my parents uh, spare bedroom into a studio. Yeah, uh, one four track to an eight track to a sixteen track. We we get it right. More tracks yeah, yeah. means more more friends, right? Yeah. So that eventually led to a to a Hollywood studio gig. Long, sad, funny, convoluted story. Later, I ended up uh, as a as a young lad uh, joining the union and working on some Disney projects, and that kind of got me into that that flow, right? And kind sure. of once you're in that in that space, I was able to kind of move to Warner Brothers and DreamWorks and did some Fox stuff and. Um, and then through all that, I owned, uh, you know, I was like 19 and I had all this work to me. It was, you know, it, it's a weird thing doing, doing music at that level, right? It's almost mm -hmm. corporate in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. So I still had that creative, you know, bone to itch. And so I, I leased some space in Orange County and I, me and my buddies got together, drank a lot of beer, bought a lot mm -hmm. of drywall and built a studio. 
And, you know, we had like the Mackie 32 channel in there and a bunch of eight outs and it was just, you know, musical, musical <laughs> debauchery. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> debauchery. It was, it was awful. And we had so much fun. So I would do my day job all day and then come back at night and make records all night in this, in this warehouse space. And, and I did that all through my 20s and uh, met a nice Canadian girl and we got married. And yeah, Herb, Herb knows, you know, you know, oh, you yeah. know Canada folks. Absolutely. We love them. Absolutely. And, uh, and every time I visited Canada, I just loved it. I love the vibe. I love the pace. I love the speed. I love being out west here. We got the Rockies and the skiing and the yeah. blue skies. And it's fantastic. So I eventually just said, let's live there. Let's go there and raise kids. And so we made our way out of LA and up here to, uh, we're in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And, uh, and you know, through all that, there was some, some other iterations of studios and things. And, and then it came time to build this place. And is that when the Sweetwater relationship well, you probably already had it. How did it, how did it manifest itself and then engage the way it did? So between uh, California and Canada, uh, I, I had, at the end of my California stint, I had gotten to know some people that were in Atlanta, and I was doing, I was flying out there to do work at a studio there. Met a guy from just outside Atlanta, and this guy's kid was a musician that I was, that I was working with, and this guy was uh, just crazy enough and and successful enough to open a live music venue just outside atlanta and so he tied live music and then we built a full big uh recording studio in there as well to record live stuff it was kind of a bluebird cafe meets you know a room sure. kind of thing and so at that point he he hired myself and my wife and I, the best man for my wedding was my buddy musician he came out three of us went out to georgia to build this thing and i got there and he said what are we going to build and i said I don't, I don't have a guy. Like I don't have a, a guy, a gear guy. So I literally just cold called who I knew to be the, the hot dogs at that point, which was Sweetwater. I just cold yeah. called that 800 number and got put on the phone with a guy named Keith, who's still uh, 15 years later, is still one of my good friends. Uh, he's no longer Sweetwater, but we keep in touch and I've flown out to his place to record him. And, uh, and so Keith and I started building this room in Georgia and we got to a point in that process where Keith said, hey, man, this, the water's getting too deep for me. I got I to gotta call in a ringer. And so I got on a call one day with this, this guy, Mike Picote or whatever <laughs> Siri thought he was called. And, uh, and Mike, Mike jumped on and just started telling me what I needed to do. And, and he, he, he was right at every turn to the point where I just said, you, you build the thing, right? So, yeah, I don't know. What do you, what do you remember, Mike? That's, that's pretty accurate, actually. You know, for, for the first studios, I got called. Keith came to me, said, "Can you can you jump in on this one since I'm, you know, console integration between live and and the technical stuff at the time?" And and we put um we put a room together, and and it just kind of took off from there. Where all of us spent a lot of time hanging out and having a lot of fun. Did you guys start from the ground up, or did you kind of patch up what you already had? Yeah, that was a ground up. That was for for this guy. He was, you know, he. I guess he would have been a client to to both Mike and I. Yeah. Well, so Mike, now, Mike, is it, yeah. Ground, is it a ground up? That that was, yeah. He took an old bank building in the in the deep south, a two hundred year old bank building, and and just started throwing up drywall and putting cables in. Wow. And it was it was a fun. It was a challenging. It was a challenging job. The studio that you're in right now, uh, is that a ground up build too? So yeah. So I guess yeah. It's just. I guess pro progressing through space and time we did about a year there. Um, and, and then our time was kind of up there. So we carried on to, to Canada and ended up here and we bought a um, uh, hundred year old farmhouse and it's this big, huge Ooh. old farmhouse that was, you know, kind of, it's up on a plateau and it was the original farmhouse here and Not this guy nice. owned stables, stables all through here. And now there's other houses around, but it's this old, big old creaky house. And so I was, I was in that thing one day and there was this old detached garage in the backyard. And I, I approached the city about, could I, could I put a studio, put a new garage and then put a studio on top was the original intention. And the city said, no, they said that bylaws and height and neighbor complaints and whatever. So then I, asked, oh, I said, can I go down? And they said, we, 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 we have to say yes. If you go down, it's not counted square footage. So all you need a permit for is a garage. It just happens to have a 1500 square foot. <laughs> recording studio in the basement, right? right? So that that started that project of of napkin sketches and I immediately got on the phone with Mike and I said, "Do it, I got I'm, I'm doing a thing. You want to you want in?" And he said, "Yeah, I want in." Wow. So we just we just started doodling like what's the gear, kind of what's the what's the dream list and what do you have coming from LA and 
and then we started the process. Did you uh, did you use an architect or did you? Uh, yeah. So you yeah, there was uh, it was yeah it was kind of based on you know digging the yard out. We just dug the yard out basically, dug a big hole, and then yeah, there was an architect that got involved. There's a there's a sound guy, uh, an acoustician up in Edmonton that got involved, and then um, we had a design design lady that you know tells me what color to paint the walls because right i don't i don't know and so yeah we dug out the we dug out the yard we put concrete we built a catacomb of concrete there's five isolation rooms and then the the main room here and uh put a new yard on top and put a new garage on that and here i sit here we are you know what i find um i happen to be a fan of of as a customer service module apple care is just like incredible you talk to a human you, you generally get off the phone and your problem is solved sweetwater is right next to it it literally is it, and it's amazing when i've ordered this computer i'm on right now apple could get it to me in four days sweetwater got it to me the next day it's an apple product um and what what is interesting about it for me and obviously i'm going to take as much bias out of it as i can because they're a partner of ours it doesn't matter who you are. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like there's a commercial, an insurance commercial where they keep going, you're getting a special rate. No, whoever calls gets incredible treatment from everybody that is literally the same thing. And then, you know, I didn't read the nine other things that Mike does in there. Then you've got this knowledge base that's crazy because it's a company full of people who are musicians and they play and they live it and they, is that what you found, Steve? Like it's, it's, well, it's it, like yeah, having like, a buddy. Like it, it, it's weird. Uh, you know, at one point I think I told Mike when I, when I finally met him in person, we got, we got, you know, down this first Georgia road and they finally came out to see the place and, and help and, sure. and Keith. And I, I said, man, I feel like I'm your only customer, right? Like it, <laughs> like it was real. I was like, do you, how you make a living? I'm, I'm the only guy, right? And he's like, yeah. dude, you have no idea how many calls I make in a day, right? Like, so it, right. it is. It is a weird. It's a weird thing to to get to know somebody, you know, on the phone, and then and then we hang out in person, and we're just like right into like, let's have a beer because we're old friends right. already, right? Right, Mike. That is that the Sweetwater way. Yeah, I mean, it's it's we you know we try to Chuck from day one is always just do the right thing and. And you know, and like the the reality of when you're relationship based selling, when we when we sell to people, like some of my best friends, I think I might have mentioned it last time I was on the show. Some of my best friends, you know, today were clients, and I mean, including Steve, we we hang out completely outside of the the studio, like often. He's been we were, we were he's been to my house Wayne. many times. Yeah. I've been to his house many times. Like we yeah. we've, we go to Nam together. Where you know he he shows up. He's been with my other clients even and friends and, and, and network, like we've worked together between him and even other clients of mine, we've all worked in the studio together. So it's pretty, it's, it's kind of like grown this network of people that keep on growing. Yeah. There was a couple of things like right in the first, the first interaction, you know, I came in with like my list, right. Of like, you know, everything that I'm supposed to have or that I ever liked. And, and Mike was, don't tell Sirac this, but Mike was down selling me on stuff. Right. He's like, you don't need that. Like, like, trust me, buy three of these instead of one of those. Like you'll, you'll thank me. Right. And yeah. you know, put, put money into cabling, like get your clocking, right, dude. Like get your room, right. Like don't buy this yeah. thing, do this thing first. Right. Right. So his, right. his grasp of the whole picture versus, you know, like the cash grab, grab and run thing has, has led to 15 years later, you know, I'm still calling him for, you know, a $29 piece of software. Right. right. Like, cause, right. cause, a lot of times they'll go, you get this $29 piece of software. You'll thank me. And he's always like, you'll thank me. And then I do. He's yeah. right. Dude's always right. He's right, man. <laughs> he is absolutely right. There's no question. No hurts question. my heart sometimes. What was, uh, I read yeah. everything. I read everything and you were right. <laughs> what was the biggest challenge in terms of treatment, sound treatment for that space? The, the biggest I see, challenge. I, I see a brick wall. I see some yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. A lot of challenges. And, and no, yeah. no rear end. Uh, base trapping. Um, yeah. So the biggest, uh, the biggest challenge of building the space, two, two things. One, uh, the house was old and we mm. tore away everything, holding it up on the South side. Cause we wanted to tunnel into the house cause it's cold here. Right. Herb. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so that was the biggest challenge is that I got a three story house. that's a hundred years old, made a lath and plaster that wants to fall in the hole. Right. Wow. So, so that was the biggest piece was engineering the footings and 
underpinning the house and all that stuff. I didn't think of that when I was like, oh, let's dig a hole. The right. second big challenge <laughs> in construction was water. LA boy doesn't understand mm-hmm. water. When you go underground in Canada, water wants to be your friend down there. Yes. And so, yes. you know, I, like what's a sump pump and why do I have multiples of them? Right. Like it's so that, and then once we got all that figured sound wise, um, you know, like, like rear wall did a big custom diffusion wall there, you know, where there is brick diffusing one side, there's, there's other stuff diffusing the other side. So we, we did a lot of balancing and then there was kind of a trick we did all down the, the ceiling with custom, custom kind of fans that are, they're grabbing stuff as it goes by and we'd shoot the room. And then I had, I had two guys kind of working around the clock in the garage and they just had a wood shop up there and they were just building panels for this place. So, so mm. the guy would come out, shoot the room and go, let's put a thing there. And the guys, and I'd call the guys over and they'd grind away and make a thing. And then you come back. And so we kind of just inched it along, along that you have, way. You have a cloud. Uh, it is a version of a cloud. Yeah. That was kind of, we kind of emulated a cloud, but in this, in this unique way. So then communicating with the, the, with the live room. Can you, can you give me a, 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 a sentence or two on, on what you were trying to accomplish with, with what you did in the live room? The, yeah, I guess the, the biggest room is this control room. Um, so a lot of times if we're big, we'll just, we'll track in here. We did one a couple weeks ago. We just shoved all the furniture out and just tracked in here. Old school. Um, the next biggest room is the drum room. Um, and you know, I mean, they're all, you know, a couple, you know, a couple hundred square feet, like they're not big rooms. Um, and, and fun, fun story. Mike and I were talking, just talking today. There's, there's a new, a new room that's being heavily considered right now to pull this out of here, kind of make this the home studio and then do a bigger live room. Cause I keep running into the need for a bigger live room. Right. So that's Mike and I's next challenge. We get to, we get to play again. So I guess I was going to say like, like part of the intention of this place um, is that it is a home studio. Like, like mm-hmm. it's commercially it's, mm-hmm. you know, like I, <laughs> I was talking to the accountant, a lot of this was managed with outside investments and things that mm-hmm. I've done from a young mm-hmm. age, right? Like I'm not, I'm not paying for this room for recording local singer songwriters. Right. So right, I've right. been blessed in that, in that right away, I got wise counsel with that stuff at a young age. And, and so it's kind of allowed me this, this freedom to build this thing in my yard. Right. And so I, I daily, especially through COVID and everything, just truly came to appreciate. And I've got young kids now, what it means to, to be a stay at home yeah. parent with this thing, 10 feet right. away. Right? right. But so part of the intention with this was to, to keep it a home studio as much commercial stuff as I put in, it, it's that environment, right? So, mm-hmm. so it's, it was a tightrope walk on how big do we make it? How fancy do we make it? How junky do we make it? Right. Like that, where's that sweet spot in there? And so right. there's a lot of, you know, and I, I the accountant. So when I started to do this whole thing, mm-hmm. you know, the accountant was like, what's your intention here? And I said, <laughs> I said, I want to build a studio that none of us can afford to use. Mm-hmm. But like, I just, we're all just going to come down here and play around in it. Right. And Huh. He, he promptly told me that was the worst business plan he'd ever heard, but <laughs> it was, a, it's, a, it's worked out. We literally just, it's as much a writing room sure. on any given day as it is a tracking room or, yep. or mixed. Yep. Yep. So Mike, the, you stood at a unique place, man. And, um, with Sweetwater's continued growth and all that kind of stuff, are you, is, is the home studio sector, whether it's writ large, like Steve or guy in his bedroom community, in that play and all the indie artists and stuff around, isn't that a growing, incredible place what, from the retail perspective, from your perspective? Yeah, it's, it's probably, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's, it's definitely one of our biggest categories of growth. I mean, um, especially during the pandemic, you know, we had to move, yeah. we had to move every, a lot of people, um, artists into a home studio. We had to move a number of, um, guys doing post-production, you know, for, mm. you know, like doing, doing surround mixing or, you know, now with a lot of Atmos rooms and everything and, yeah, and guys yeah, wanting yeah. to work. And then in the pandemic, even, you know, I don't necessarily, I know we're not just like out of a pandemic, but on hopefully what is the tail end of it. Yeah. Or, you know, we're running into guys that this is the, this is the way they want to work moving forward. Like mm-hmm. people that went home and got to work on records at home realized I want to stay home. So mm-hmm. right now it's, it's been as, as busy as ever for new spaces to come you know, and whether that's just taking a room and putting, you know, pro gear for doing vocals or mm-hmm. singer songwriter room all the way down to professional mixing room. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I was like, what during the, at the, at the tail end of the, the 
the pand or at the very beginning of it in March, I put a SSL in MySpace. Like, and then it was, you know, we put a console in right at the very beginning. And I was I was as busy as ever, just even on production and working on some of the the records I work on. And really and I think for our clients of Sweetwater, I think that's been really like a huge, huge category for us. I'm I'm a bit confused. The relationship between you and Sweetwater and the client you you actually get involved in the in the planning and other than the, the ex- external construction are you are you there on scene and are you kind of helping to construct and and, and and handle the project does sweetwater do that um, get more telephone things and advice well for for a lot of us it might be over the telephone um, for me I've been involved on a lot of builds on site where I've gone out and you know been there for the integration and everything it's just so it's almost like as little or as much as somebody needs we're definitely capable of helping with you know depending on budgets and everything mm-hmm. I told us not working can you fix that what's that I ain't gonna repeat that again. <laughs> no, I was like, I didn't know. It's, it's probably one of his titles. <laughs> I said my toilet's not. I said my toilet's not working. Can you come fix that? Uh, we 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 got some people. We got yeah, some people. Send somebody. Good <laughs> we, answer, got, we know buddy. somebody. Yeah, it's fun. Even even from from you know me being you know home home studio guy. Like anecdotally, it's amazing now the kind of collective that's starting to form amongst all of us right like it's Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it used to be kind of us versus the commercial studio or what or us versus each other or whatever now the commercial studios are kind of starting to move into home studios like mike was Mm -hmm. saying and so now we're learning like you've got a great drum room and you you you're really good at catching guitars and you've got a great synth collection or whatever so it's amazing how much dropbox you know is is integrating into into my life anyway just shipping things in and out especially during the pandemic how many things got moved in and out via the interwebs, right? We see it. We see it on the show all the time. Um, on the talent side, everybody's a hybrid. Everybody's a bit of an engineer and a bit of a producer and a bit of a songwriter and a bit of a mixer and a bit of a mastering Definitely. person, so and so forth. And then, and from a room standpoint, this commoditization of it is: you can, you know, if you're in LA, you can be in East West and you can be in your pad. And the music can be competitive and it depends on how you want to get it. And there's no barrier to it. And prices, you know, uh, the, uh, one of the things about Sweetwater that just amazes me as an observer of business is how much they can grow in. I was like, who owns up a 44,000 square foot store in the middle of a pandemic? What, what the hell? And, and just the attention to coming from the craft of music outward as opposed to let me get your check inward and then we'll figure it out and it's so distinctive that it's hard not to be loyal to it because it's about you you know like like you you found solutions to what you need to do to be in calgary to make a living with a guy who turned out to be a beer buddy and who just rocked your place and just yeah. did it as part of his gig yeah you know that that's hard that's hard to get and, it out uh, of place. and and the the ability to harness resources is is fantastic like you know if i if i want such and such a guitar mike goes i don't know i don't know about that guitar but let me talk to so and so and i'll call you back right like and then and then that he's that guitar isn't available but we have a we know the guy who makes them and he's going to send me one in 10 minutes he's going to drive yeah, one over, look, right like yeah, it's look, like this weird you know we go to nam and I'm, I'm hanging out with the people whose names are on that stuff yeah i know like like right? Paul, like mike's like you're having sushi and stuff yeah, mike's like, like i know this this guy <laughs> and i'm like i've been using his stuff since i'm a kid he's like well let's go have coffee with him right like yeah, so like, there's huh? this other this other way of getting things done yeah that you've got to have a certain amount of mass to pull off that i think yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um mike in terms of you know, it's so hard and something, I, I think our business constantly evolves. Like I, whether it's plugins or technology or software or the mixture of streaming and the audio, we're in a constant industrial revolution. And, and so, you know, it takes a minute to turn the Titan, you know, turn to the Queen Elizabeth and, and it comes at you so fast. One of the things I think is, and we connected a few people and tried to use our relationships to do that. Mike, the R and D side of Sweetwater does that keep you guys ahead? You know, looking at product, getting it early, deciding if you're going to carry it, all that stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the training too. Like I've, you know, I've mentioned, you know, like it's it's a place where 
you know, I'm surrounded by some of the brightest, smartest guys in the industry too. Like in my opinion, like there's, you know, different categories and everyone has their expertise things, but some of the, some of the, I think with a lot of really knowledgeable people, you tend to like drive, you know, drive stuff forward, like, like the learning and the ability to take on new technology. So whether it's a shift in Dante or digital, you know, like whatever, whatever the formats are that, that come, we're definitely, you know, we train multiple times a week with certain training, you know, with meetings and really on top of it with, with office hours and, and over the pandemic, even we had remote trainings where mm. we're constantly educating ourselves, ourselves to stay on the forefront of the technology. So I think something with Sweetwater too, is when you have a lot of guys in a building, um, we got a lot of guys and girls that are really, really driven by you know, technology and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff is fun for you. Like, you know, we Mm -hmm. don't look at it. Like, it's not like you're learning about something and you're like, Oh, I got to go do this now. Mm -hmm. You know, you can actually Mm -hmm. be like, you know, you're fortunate to keep on, on the, on the cutting edge. When David and I went, it was the first time we'd actually met Chris Flynn, who is, you know, kind of my contact. And, and to your point, Steve, now my boy, like, it's not like, like that's my dude, period. Yeah, Um, it's true. And, and, and like, he showed up like on a laser transport. It was some shit that I had never seen in Fort Wayne, just <laughs> flown it in. And I was like, oh my God, this <laughs> Sweetwater is incredible. <laughs> like, it was just, one, of the, uh, Herb, one of the main things I remember about Chris is uh, he, 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 he led us to one of the greatest restaurants I've ever eaten at. Paulus? Man, man, yeah. And let's just give a shout out to Paula's right now. Yeah. You know, like, with crackers. So, like you're eating Paula's right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, here's, let's go. Let's I'm dreaming go. about it. And here's what was odd about it. We're in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I used to live in Kentucky, states next door. We are landlocked, right? This was the best crab. Like Paula personally went out, was on the deadliest catch boat, yeah. grabbed the crab, a show, by the way, I never miss. Grabbed the crab, brought it back to the store, cooked it personally for Dave and I. This crab was, Dave and I were, we were speaking like in tongues for a minute afterwards. And it was so good. We went back the next day where we just over killed everything. Man, delicious. We were, yeah. right, Dave? We were, we yeah. were blown yeah. away. I, I, I can't remember for sure, but I think we ate there every day that we were there. Well, we certainly dreamed about it. I think we were only there. But yes, we did. And, we went and back to back. I know that. Yeah, it was definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was, it was a, a back to back homestand. But it was also a little bit about um, in a town like Fort Wayne, where, where Chuck and Sweetwater has such a big footprint, too. There's a number of businesses. There's a number of things. There's a culture. When we rented the car at the airport, and this is relevant to the audience, the guy who rented us the car at the airport started talking to us about Sweetwater. Are you here for a good? Oh, Sweetwater's this, Sweetwater's that, Sweetwater. And, you know, people in town don't have to love you. That's the, so it, it, it's, it's something that goes beyond. So if you're going to buy from them, if you're going to interact with them, you're going to learn from them. It goes so far beyond just that transaction. There's a culture of taking care of business, of being the best. But also bring it down so it's not over your head. It's like regular people who happen to be badasses who are going to help you be badass at a price that makes sense. And it's going to be excellent. And, and again, I know they're a partner and I'm not try, I'm trying not to be biased. It's been my experience that we've turned people on. It's been my experience as a partner. When we have people on the show, it is. It is. And when we were there... We ran around with some experienced people and some brand new people. And of course, I have to put everybody through some Rorschach test. And I, there was this young brother that was running around with us. Man, I took him to the side. I was like, all right, we're going to have a black conversation right now. How is it? What's it like? Was this, that, and the other? I mean, he was just thrilled. He was like, it's an incredible experience. So, you know, I, too many plaudits, I'm sure, for the audience, and we'll edit some. But um, I'm telling you, if you don't have a relationship, if you need to find out expertise, if you need to, you can take my words or Dave's words to it. Dave, your experience with Sweetwater as a creative person. Well, um, there were a lot of things that made me feel welcome and comfortable, which is a, you got to have that to be creative. But uh, 
the, the, the owner of the company, I, I, I can't remember. I think he called me by name when he met me. And who does that? And then, and then Sweetwater has its own zip code. A lot of people don't know that. But um, everything just was everything was just first class. The, the flight was first class, and 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 not 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 over the top, but just right. Everything there was just just right. And then and then going down the hallways, people smile, and and and, and we, we we met so many people that worked there. And I don't know. It was just it was a it was a a moment I'd love to recreate sometime. I'd love to go back. I'd love to hang out there. How many people go to Gear Fest, Mike? It's like Sweetwater's NAM, right? How many th- people do you think went pre-COVID? Uh, I think it was about 16,000 on the last one. I know Chuck, the owner, stood at the front door and shook every single hand. Yeah. Every year. He, he stood there year. for hours and hours and hours and hours saying hello to every person that came through the door. Yeah. Every it hurt year. my mind. It hurt my mind. Um, I mean, <laughs> we shake a lot of hands. Yeah, and I'm yeah. telling you that I started crying when I heard that I just couldn't, yeah. you know, and, and, and the other thing that I've had an experience with culturally, and I, I never did it often. If I had to email Chuck, Chuck's a big dude, and you know, I mean, meaning he's busy and he's important and he has a lot of impact and all that kind of stuff. I'd get an answer back like in three minutes and I, he's got other stuff to do, yeah. <laughs> you know, than, than some B grade, you know, a podcast do um but it, it, that personal thing is yeah. so when you take if you're an artist or a musician or an engineer or whatever the case may be from the problem solving if you're on the road at sound check and you need to find out something you can call somebody and they will get in it with you from the recommendations the r d the customer service rectifying a problem if there's a problem consistently being with you through it. I, I have guys who've had the same sales engineer for 15, 20 years. Um, it, you know, as a business person, I try to poke, poke holes in things. I was like, let me, I'll find something that's not happening. Let me just, and I'm, I, I haven't been very successful at that. I, I keep trying to lift up the hood and everything under the hood is all clean and the cables roll properly and there's no grease on the engine and it's like, and it runs high. Um, it's really incredible. And, and, and I happen to think, I'm curious from Mike's perspective, I think being in Fort Wayne has something to do with it. Um, it's a great community and, you know, it's grown. You've watched it over. I've watched it over almost 20 years, you know, continue to grow from when I've, when I first moved here and came in to the Midwest. Um, you know, I think there's a, it definitely the kind of people in the community, you know, reflects upon the people here too. And I think Sweetwater is involved heavily in the community. So I think that definitely helps with the, you know, with, but Fort Wayne's, you know, not having to be in the, you know, I, I think it's a unique advantage, you know, to us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mike, when we were there, they were finishing the distribution warehouse. Can you, uh, first of all, I'm pretty sure it's finishing. Can you describe the value of having things right there to ship right that moment? Um, yeah, we, we, uh, new distribution center was done and opened right before, I guess the pandemic. So we, we got in there, um, in perfect, you know, well, really, really good timing. Yeah. So somebody had the crystal ball, you know, to, to, to know that was happening, but, um, yeah, as far as the, it's, you know, the idea just basically to move more packages, serve the customers better to be able to get more stuff in the hands and to get the gear out the door as fast <laughs> as we can. It was you know, so there's orders that come in depending on what they are. We get, we still get orders that come in sometimes, you know, they might be scheduled to ship the next day, but they'll come in six, 7 PM Eastern time and they still go, you know, that's not, you know, always the case but, you know, for that late in the day, but you know, like ha- having the efficiency they've had back there has been huge for our customers. Yeah, Her- Herb and I couldn't believe the size. How many square feet? Uh... Um, 650,000, I believe. Woo! Oh, about the size of my bedroom. So yeah, <laughs> probably about size your living room or bedroom, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His <laughs> toilet doesn't even work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Dave's ego came in about six eighty. So uh, <laughs> it's grown. It's that. grown. It's grown. I just it's, have. It, I just got a compliment yesterday. It, it swelled up. A hundred thousand yeah. compliment. <laughs> good. Good to know something's swelling up. That, that's, oh wow! There we go. There we go. <laughs> but then boom. <laughs> um, 
if you were to give advice to somebody who didn't have a lot of bread, who needed to find their way through, who was going to, the bedroom is where they're going to be. What would you tell them? Uh, I, uh, for me, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was learn, learn some music. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to engineer or produce, you got to learn some music, right? You can't, mm-hmm. you can't bring people where you aren't. Right. So Good that was point. an early one for me is just kind of learn enough to communicate, be able to, you know, you want to mm-hmm. add a sus to a chord and they're chatting about it. You can join in. Right. Mm-hmm. And that, that you, know, you learn from that, you learn pitch and time and all that, that stuff. Right. That, that helps mm-hmm. a lot. So mm-hmm. that was a, a big one is, is learn music, study music. I, I've, I've been collecting vinyl for years and years and years. And that to me is my forced learning, right? It, it forces mm-hmm. you to stop and sit and, and go on the journey as it was intended mm-hmm. right, by an artist. And so that to me is the value of, it does it sound better? We debate it all day, but to me, it's a forced, kind of a forced journey, right? You can't just double right. click your way out of it. Right. Uh, so learning music is a big one. And then, and then the other one I always tell people, and it kind of goes to this whole conversation is, is trust somebody with, with part of your journey, right? Like you, you mm-hmm. gotta have somebody you can call and ask. Mm-hmm. When I started, it was the 800 number on the back of whatever. I got my right. Casio keyboard. I get on that 800 number, right? right. I ended up on the phone with, with a guy named Harold Rhodes one day. And <laughs> it, it, I found out later that was Mr. Rhodes. Harold Rhodes, right? I was <laughs> chatting, I was chatting to his wife who passed the phone to him. Cause I had some questions about this Rhodes thing. Somebody gave me when I was in high school. Right. And so I called the number from keyboard magazine. Wow. So, you know, that, that kind of, so, so a, a guy like Mike, you know, ties into this where I go, here's what I'm trying to achieve. And it's amazing what people know. Right. Yeah. And like I, I alluded to earlier, I, I'll research what I think and where I think I'm going. And I end up on all the weird forums where people fight about, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. things that I can't even spell. Right. right, right. Completely irrelevant to my life. We're off in the weeds, you know, debating politics while I wanted to learn about a preamp or whatever. And then you go to a guy like, like Mike, who either has used the gear, owns the gear, or sitting next to a guy who owns the gear. Right. And so there's something in that. Like, what do you think? I should do at this, at this turn. Right. So I think those two moves, like, like learn what you're trying to achieve musically and then trust, trust some people on your journey. Mike, what would you say if you were talking to that same person? Um, I mean, have a, have a good idea of what you want. Like, what are your goals too? Like what's, what's the, what's the, like a lot of people approach a home studio that I want to do everything, but what Uh, do they really want? What do you really need to accomplish? You know, like, are you like, and um, you can do everything in the home studio, but let focus on like what you're trying to, like, are you a singer? Are you a guitar player? Are you going to be recording guitars? Are you a drummer? Like what's the most important aspect? And then put the quality in the room into like put the quality of the gear into like what you're really trying to accomplish first. And the rest of the stuff will come. Like you can grow it. You can fit, you know, as it, as it's needed. But I think just having an idea of exactly what you want to do, because you get a lot of people that I want to do a home studio, but they don't really think, like what kind of projects do I want to work on or what am I really trying to achieve? We help them a lot of times narrow that down, but right. um, I think that's a, um, it's important just to have a good direction of like where they want to, like where they want to be. And you can and understand that you don't have to, I mean, Steve's got a nice little uh, mixing console sitting behind him back there. Yeah. And, you know, and, and there's, that's definitely an application for a lot of people, but it doesn't have to, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that's for everybody. Like, and that's right. the right answer. You know, it could be, you know, good interface and really good guitar cabs. If that's what you're doing, we can, we can figure and, that and out. And vice versa. Like I'm, I'm not making beats in here. Yeah. Right? right. Like those guys, right. I marvel at those guys, those guys who are deep into controllers and synths and right. modes and right. Like I don't, I, I would hurt my head if I tried to do that. Right. So <laughs> right. It, it, to Mike's point, right. Like you come at it. I was like, I want some analog. Like I love that. Put it in the red. Right. But yeah, if I had to do true hip hop in here, I'd hurt myself. Mike, quick question. At most applications for home studios, you know, yes, I, I, I mean it's growing. Um, Apple support, um, you know, I think Carrie at Dolby's done an amazing, yep. amazing job. He yes. did, he did the market, he's he's unbelievable. He's great. Yep. I've Very known him. For, you know, I've known him for years too. But the, uh, um, you know, I think it's a lot of a lot of people don't think about it, but it's definitely doable. And mm-hmm. you know, when you think of a box that's you know eighty five dB with twenty dB of headroom at the mix position. If you put mm-hmm. a Cali monitor, you know, seven feet away from you, it does 85 dB. So there are certain mm-hmm. products out there that are making it definitely accessible for the, um, for a home studio and to be able to do more stuff in the room. So it's, if, if that's what is the application, somebody needs to do it as long as you can, you know, and Dolby's great with the onboarding process and helping, 
um, clients do that. And um, we've been doing a lot of Atmos um, here lately. You know, I mm-hmm. think it's definitely a big wave that's coming. Oh, um, yeah. It's not sure, already sure. here. It's here. Um, sure. uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's doable, you know, and it, it doesn't mean, you know, when, when people first started approaching Atmos, they would come thinking that, oh, this has to be a big, like, we're, right. we're doing major films. You yeah, know, exactly. Just, they weren't looking we're at the Netflix. Side, yeah. So, you know, so it's, it's been, um, we've done some amazing rooms that, uh, that are not the largest rooms and that fit within certain budgets and stuff for the clients. And, mm-hmm. and it's been, a, you know, and I think that category is going to continue to grow like really, really yeah. well. I think so too. Well, I got to tell you guys, um, Dave, and I'm sure you feel the same. I'll let you chime in. Um, it is always good to be educated in a way that's just enlightening. Lights go on when you talk to people and stuff like that. Uh, this is Mike's second time on the show. And every time Chris and I talk about it, he goes, what do you think about Mike? Yes. Like, he doesn't even get the question out. I'm like, uh, yeah. And can we do it tomorrow? Um, just because for our audience, but selfishly for Dave and I as well, too. You just go, oh, man. Oh, wow. Look at that information. And look at this. Uh, Steve from, you know, you got two pieces near and dear to my heart, California and Canada. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing it. Um, I, you know, the, the picture behind you, if there's ever anything that, I mean, it just looks incredible. Your room looks incredible. And the idea that it's a home studio, I would never, if we hadn't had any context, would have thought that. And I'm sure the sound that comes out of that must be, must be awesome. And it speaks to, you know, your view and Mike Peacock and Sweetwater and um, man, we're in, we're in good shape. Uh Oh, I think that's free. The hostage. What what does the back of your card say today? Batter's box. Steve, do you know what batter's box is? Of course. All right. Well then let's rock it. Let's go, Mike. Yeah, right. me so, okay. so Mike, is Mike included in this? Yeah, everybody. You too. Oh, okay. Uh, popcorn. Oh, you hadn't asked anything yet. My yeah. bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Rockwell or 703? Steve or me? Don't Rockwell. Me. Uh, that's, a, that's a type of treatment. And yep. this tends. Uh, the sound of hits. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Synthesizers. Moog one. Studio furniture. Gotta go with sound chair. construction. <laughs> <laughs> Comfortable chair. <laughs> uh, favorite vocal mic? U67 for me. Most hmm. used is the SM7. And Not the beat. Oh, Not the beat. Isn't? The old one. Drum machines. My childhood. Mm. <laughs> Pencils. Two two SS. Did you say consoles? Yeah, console. Yeah. Oh, console. Uh, two SSL owners. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, sometimes, sometimes just a monitor controller though. Yeah, okay. yeah correct. Yeah, true. Uh, favorite EQ. Oof. Right now, mine's a Mog EQ four M. Me too. Me too. Cliff and Cliff and those guys. Man. I love Cliff stuff. Uh, the, the the APIs, the five fifties. Nice. My soul. Okay. Uh, favorite compressor. Today or forever, for to, right now, I'm, I've been Acme Audio XL. The XLA three has been, mm. been, I've been digging that lately. But I guess mm. Desert Island would be the CL one. CL one, yeah. Soup Tech, you talking about? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, that was fun. Nobody got hurt. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. I was so glad to contribute so much because. <laughs> My, my one, my one answer was Miss Pac Man. I didn't know where to put it. <laughs> um, guys, we are um, we're thrilled. Thanks for taking some time with us. Um, uh, you know, this is stuff that's that's just manna from heaven for our audience and and for just the relationship and the respect that you afford us. And um, we are constantly humbled at just how badass you absolutely are. And also cool people. So, um, you know, to it's been pop- an honor to speak to you guys. Oh, thanks, Steve. We um, yeah, no. we're humbled every day at, at what happens to us and, and continues mm-hmm. to, and it's growing and getting bigger. So, uh, but it's also because of the partners that we have. I mean, let's call it what it is. Um, yeah. So, uh, on November, in November, um, my knees are always a little flat because I'm on bended knee, waiting for Chris to come back and say, "Next year or not next year?" I'm like. 
please, Chris, can we keep going? Um, because it's because it's so great and we get to do stuff. And, and most importantly, we get to help people. We get musicians who go, man, thank you for introducing me or man, thank you for that episode. Or I learned so much or I this, that and the other. And, and who couldn't help? Yeah, you that? guys get you guys get some great producers and engineers man. on the show. And you know what? Right? Every one of them get referred to Sweetwater. Yeah, I ask every single Appreciate one of them. That. Do you have a retail relationship? And they all go, well, not really. I'm like, well, you do now. <laughs> um, but they come on because of this, you know, because we get to show things and approach things differently. And, and so we're not here without you guys. That's for sure. Um, DP, say good night. Good night. And thanks for letting us in your house, Steve. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that was fun, guys. <laughs>